Would you stand to your feet? Come on, let's stand to your feet. Would you put your hands in the air? And would you lift up your voices to God and pray with me, Father, we pray in Jesus' name for this moment, God, with you. God, that you meet our every need. God, I pray that you would meet our church's every need. God, for those watching online, meet their every need today. God, we pray that you would do the impossible. I'm believing. I'm believing. I'm believing you to do the miraculous inside of the families and the people of Impact Church. God, we'll be quick to give you the praise and the glory we all say in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give them a praise. Praise clap today. Yeah. You may be seated. I want you to look at somebody and tell them he gives me all I need. He gives me all I need. We went to three services and the 1230 service is like 800 adults, which is a lot. But the first two services are like 1,300 adults. So if you want more space, you could go to the 1230 service. But if you like sitting on laps with people that you don't know, you could keep coming to this service as well. How many are ready for the Word of God today? I'm glad that you're here with us. I want us to open by reading uh, my favorite chapter in the book of Psalms. I actually have two favorite chapters. Uh, one is my second favorite chapter, and that is Psalm 91. And Psalm 91 is my second favorite chapter. And my mama told me that she used to pray Psalm 91 over my life every day as a child. And so if you are a mama, do I have any mamas in here? If you're a grandmama, any grandmamas in here? If you're a child, do I have any children in here? That should be all of us. We're all children of somebody. But if you are a mom, a, a grandma, if you're a dad, a grandpa, you should, you should do what my mom did, and you should pray Psalm 91 over your child and over your grandchild because it is a psalm of God's protection. That's what Psalm 91 is about. He says things like, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91 says that God is my refuge and my fortress, and surely God will never leave us. It says, you shall not fear the terror by night nor the arrows by day. Psalm 91, it says, a thousand might fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but no evil will come near you. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will overtake you, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. But look at somebody and tell him, but he's not even preaching on Psalm 91 today. That's not even what he's talking about. But that's why it's my, fa my second favorite. But today I, I want to look at my favorite psalm, and that is Psalm chapter 23. And I want us to read these six verses out loud together. Psalm chapter 23, verse 1 through 6. Ready? Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah, we can, we can clap for that. Father, we come before you today and we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your goodness. God, today I pray that you would speak to us, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Speak to our families. Shout, shout, 
the word of God into our souls today. God, we need you and we long for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. We all say, Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them again, he gives me all I need. Come on, tell somebody needs to hear it. They need to be told he gives me all I need. Look at him again and say, he gives you all you need. He gives you all you need. Look at him again and say, but he doesn't give you all you greed. He didn't give you all your greeds. He doesn't give you all your greeds. He gives you all you need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In the NIV, the New International Version, it says, I lack nothing. I shall not want. I lack nothing. In the New American Standard Bible, he says, I will not be in need. So he says, I shall not want. I will not be in need. I will lack nothing. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. In fact, three things today. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my supplier. And the Lord is my savior. That's what we're going to look at, those three items today. And if you have your outlines, you can open them up, turn them on, take them out. And I want to give you some, some, some things to think about today where he says, number one, the Lord is my shepherd. I love this analogy because David is a king, but he's referring back to the time when he was a shepherd. So he writes from this experience. And he's saying, yo, I know what it's like to be a shepherd, but the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. David understood the role of a shepherd, the responsibility of a shepherd. I mean, if you've never been a shepherd, you can only speculate what the role of a shepherd would be, but he has firsthand experience. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd. David would know that sheep are weak, so they need a shepherd. They're defenseless. If, if, if a sheep falls down, did you know that they can't get back up on their own? They need a shepherd to help them up. Their fleece, it, it can get so heavy that they tip over and they roll on their backs and they literally cannot get up. They, they, they're bearing too much weight. The weight is too heavy that they flip over on their backs and they'll suffocate. So too much weight to carry. A shepherd has to help them up. They've got to be sheared for their own good. Sheep will remain dirty unless somebody cleans them up. Y'all know this. Sheep are utterly stupid. And Jesus referred to you. (laughs) Sheep tend to wander. Sheep tend to follow. They just follow the other sheep. They just follow the butt in front of them. They ain't asking no questions. I'm just following that butt in front of me. They'll follow that butt right off a cliff. Some of you aren't hearing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, some of you got some butts in your life that you need to stop following. It would radically change your life. Or you can just keep following. And you can just walk your life right off a cliff. Jesus, he said, you are my sheep. (laughs) David said, the Lord is my shepherd. But Jesus said, not only that, he said, I came, Jesus said, I came so that my sheep will have life and so they will have everything they need. 
There's that phrase again. They'll have everything they need. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. My sheep, they listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So because sheep are followers, the shepherd gives us something worth following. The Lord is my shepherd. See, your shepherd is your strength when you are weak and defenseless. Your shepherd, when you fall down, he's there to pick you back up. When life becomes too heavy, for you to bear and that knocks you down and it feels like it's suffocating you, your shepherd is there to pick you back up and take on your burdens. Your shepherd is there to clean you up. Sheep, they need a shepherd. All right, let's clap on the count of three. One, two, three. I don't know if you remember, but there was a time when David spoke about how a bear and a lion stole his sheep. And David said, I went out after them and I attacked and I killed them. How do you know that's a good shepherd? Like, that's a really good shepherd. Like, would you do that? If you were taking care of your daddy's sheep and a bear and a lion took the sheep Today's young people generation to be like, sorry, dad. I don't know what happened. Did you try, son? Oh, I didn't even think about trying. It's a different culture today. But David said, man, I ran after that lion. I ran after that bear and I grabbed a hold of him and I killed him with my own hands. That's how important this job. These are my daddy's sheep. You can't have my daddy's sheep. You know the Bible says that the thief, your enemy, the devil, comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. But your father says, but that's my sheep. You can't have my sheep. Let me tell you something and make sure that you fully understand that God is not just protecting you and looking after you and caring for you. He's running after your enemy. He's running after your enemy. And you can put your trust in the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. One, I shall not be in need. I will lack nothing. Number two, the Lord is my supplier. Yeah, this is a big one because we think we think that we are our own suppliers. And if I want something in life or need something in life, then I've got to go get it. Self-made. <laughs> there ain't nothing self-made. There's only God made. There, there, there's nothing self-made. I'm a self-made. You're not a self-made nothing. You, you might have taken what God made and used it for good and put what God made, but you're God made. You, you're, you're God made because God is our source. He's our supplier. He gives me all I need. In fact, it says in Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply. All your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I love this. My God shall supply. I put it in the King James Version because it just has more like mm to it. He shall supply. Because the NIV says he will supply. But something about the word shall. Like my God shall supply. He shall. He sh- it shall be done. He doesn't say my God might supply. He might. I don't know. Never know. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Ah, hopefully he will. But that's the way a lot of our prayer lives are. God, maybe you will. God, if maybe you would. God, I'm thinking you might. I'm thinking hopefully you will. 
No, the, ver- the verse, the scripture, the holy written word of God says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He shall supply according to his riches. He's rich. Dudes, God's, God's wealth and resource, there's no limit. You understand? There's no limit. There's no limit. Like, like it's a different deal. You, you can tap into things that you could never tap into on your own because of your daddy. You know, I, this is about, I don't know, 15 years ago or something. And I was with a friend. This guy played in the NBA. And his wife and and, and he were in town. They paid for, he paid for the Milwaukee Bucks. And his name was Michael Red. Good friend. Still a good friend. He was the star of the team. He played on the Olympic team and all this. And he was in town. Spending a few days. He and his wife, Akia, spent a few days with Natalie and I. And we went to the fashion square. And he's like, Trav, do they have a Gucci store here? I'm like, bro, I don't know. I've never stepped foot in a Gucci store. I have no idea. I said, but I'll look. They have a Gucci store here. How many know you have a Gucci store here? How many know? If you know they have a Gucci store at Fashion Square, raise your hand. I need you to give to our kids' ministry campaign. (laughs) And so we walk in and... I'm for the first time ever inside of a Gucci store. And I'm thinking maybe I'll get something. And I was like, this t-shirt's, ah, 800 bucks. It's a t-shirt, just like this one, made in Bangladesh. (laughs) Just like this one. Like 800 bucks. Looked at another. I look at a pair of flip flops. Most of the shoe is missing. It's like 1200 bucks for flip flops. I'm thinking, like, can I just have one flip flop? Maybe I'll just hop around. So I saw this sport coat. Oh, yeah, it was fly. I was like, dude, that, that's a nice jacket. It's a sport coat. It looked like you could probably get it at Goodwill. But it was cool looking. And I said, Mike, I said, dude, this, this, you need that. That right there would look good on you. And he's like, yeah, try it. Like, that, that is nice. I said, Mike, Natalie and I are going to go to Dillard's. We'll catch up with you later. Where are my Dillard's people at? I got any Dillard's people. You don't have to give to the kids' ministry. <laughs> and so so that sport coat is like five grand like five grand like five thousand dollars I'm thinking like dude I could buy a motorcycle or something you should be able to ride something that costs five grand <laughs> and so I exhausted my time at Dillard's so I text Mike, I say, hey, Natalie and I are going to be in the car. Take your time. He comes out with bags on bags on bags from the Gucci store. And I said, you went crazy. He's like, man, I did. I love that store. He's making like 18 million a year. He can love that store. And then he goes, Trav. And he opens a little sport coat. And I go, you got it. And he goes, yeah, for you. And he gives me the sport coat. I was blessed with something I never could have gotten on my own. This is what God does for you. I'm not saying you're going to get a Gucci jacket. Are you feeling what I'm saying or do I need to keep breaking this down? 
He gives you all you need. He gives you everything. He gives you everything. I think so many times we hear these scriptures. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My God shall supply all my needs. And I think oftentimes we think of really surface stuff. Oh, God will give me that raise. God will give me that promotion. God will give me that production. God will give me that new deal. God will give me that new situation. And we think in terms of money or worldly possessions, but God supplies you with the deep stuff, not just the surface stuff. He, he provides you, he supplies you with things, listen, that money cannot buy. God supplies you with his supernatural peace in the middle of a storm. Money can't buy that. God supplies you with the ability to forgive somebody that hurt you so deeply, but you have this ability to forgive them like Jesus forgave you. Money can't buy that. God gives you the ability and he supplies you with the courage. And man, it takes courage to come clean. Money can't buy that. God gives you the ability and supplies you with comfort in your times of trouble, with strength when you are weak, with wisdom when you don't know what to do, you don't know what to say. My God shall supply all my needs. My God shall supply with the grace that is sufficient for me. He shall supply with his healing power. He shall supply open doors, but he shall also supply closed doors. My God shall supply all my needs because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not one, God knows exactly, somebody say exactly, exactly what you need, when you need it, how you need it. He knows exactly, God knows more than you know what you need. And listen, sometimes what you need, it's not what you want. Sometimes what you want is not what you need. Sometimes what you need is not what you think you need. Because sometimes you need correction. Sometimes you need discipline. Sometimes you need a good rebuke. Sometimes you need a wake up call. Sometimes you need to be humbled. Sometimes you need to hit rock bottom. Sometimes you, you need, sometimes you need the valley of the shadow of death. But there's never been a time in your life where you've thought you've needed that. There's never been a time where I'm like, God, give me the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> but God knows there are times you need the valley of the shadow of death. God knows, and maybe today you're in that valley. Maybe today you find yourself right in the middle of the valley and you you have to understand that valleys are a part of your destiny they are a part of your journey and i understand that even though i'm in the valley god supplies my every need it's not just when i'm on the mountaintop with lamborghinis and rolls royces sometimes that's not god's provision at all Sometimes that could be the devil giving you worldly things to prevent you from holy and heavenly things. And the greatest gift, the greatest 
gift that God supplies us with. There's no better gift. There's no greater gift that God supplies us with than the gift of his presence. His presence. Can you imagine that we get the presence of God? We get to be in the presence of God. That there's no place you've ever been where God hasn't been with you. The, the, the Bible says in Isaiah 43, when you go through deep waters and great troubles, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you won't drown. When you walk through the fires of oppression, you won't be burned up. I will be with you. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God, you are with me. You are with me. There's no greater gift that God supplies us with than the gift of his presence. And God's presence is with you in the valley. In fact, sometimes God's got to get you to a valley so you discover his presence. Sometimes God's got to allow a valley so that you are all alone with him. Sometimes God's got to take you to a valley so that his voice is the only voice. Because we tend to stay busy and we have too many voices and God's voice gets buried under your mom's voice and your sister's voice and your coworker's voice and your hairdresser's voice, your hairdresser's voice. <laughs> Woo, hey, hey, we'll keep it real right in here. The social media voices, the Instagram voice, the Facebook voice, the X voice, the TikTokies, <laughs> talk. And you're like, why? Well, I, I don't know. I can never hear God talk. He's trying. He's trying. So sometimes you end up in this valley and it's in those valleys where you can think that you're isolated. But in reality, God's got you insulated from the noise and from the distractions and the bright lights of the world so that he can be alone with you. And we love the mountaintops, don't we? Oh man, if life could just be a mountaintop forever. <laughs> Amen is right. And I gotta tell you a thing I've learned about mountaintops because I've been on a whole bunch of them. I've never been only on a mountaintop. I'll be on a mountaintop, one foot on the mountaintop, one foot in the valley. And I'm like, God, just for like six months, could I be on a mountaintop? Yeah, two days even. God, yes, please, Lord. Two days. Just give me a breath of refresh. Reprieve, please. But even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because you are with me. And your presence is with me. And because your presence is with me, your peace is with me. And your power is with me. Because I'm in this valley. And because I have his presence, I have this peace and though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil because I have a protector I have God who's going before me who's looking out for me I shall fear no evil I shall fear no evil 
Though, though I walk through, though, I, that means I'm going to go through valleys. It doesn't say, hey, hopefully, if you ever go through a valley. No, he says, though, even though, though, though I go through, isn't it great though that he says through and not to? He says, even though, though I go through the valley of the shadow, because through is a different destination than to, because through means I'm just passing, I'm just passing by, man. I'm gonna get out of here as quick as I can. No offense to you, devil. I'm getting up out of this valley. Though I go through the valley, the through the look at somebody and tell them, you're going through it. You're going through it, but you're gonna get through it. Tell them you're going through it and you're gonna get through it. Tell them again, you're going through it and you're gonna get through it. And you're gonna get through it. And so here's my question: when you do get through it, what are you gonna do with it? Yes, mountaintop. When you go through it and you get out of it, you're going to let the whole world know how God got you through that valley and how God got you out of that valley. And look at me today. I should have been left for dead in the middle of that valley. But look what God did. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah, God. You got me through this. And only you could have got me through this. Hallelujah, Jesus. I would have never gotten through this if you hadn't pushed me and pulled me and protected me through this valley. Woo! God, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord. And he says, this is just, man, this hits me good. He says, the valley of the shadow of death. He, he doesn't say the valley of death. And words matter. He says the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, it's not actually death. It might look like death. It might feel like death. It might seem like you are not making it through this, but it's just a shadow. And I've learned some things in my own life about shadows. One is that shadows are bigger than reality. I've learned that shadows, at least to my knowledge, have never hurt anybody. I've learned that anywhere there's a shadow, there is always a light. And if you turn and look to the light, the shadow will fall directly behind you. And you remember Jesus said in John chapter eight, verse 12, I am the light of the world and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of light. I'll fear no evil because you are with me. When you have somebody that's with you that's like more powerful than you, stronger than you, it just like changes everything about your swagger. I'm five, nine and three quarters, 170 pounds. I have so much swagger. It's because of the people I'm around. My right hand man is Andre Wadsworth. He's 6'4", 290 NFL. It's about Josiah was eight. Jojo's 20 now, so 12 years ago. 12 years ago, I went to take my car to this tire place to get the tires changed. Andre followed me and Jojo to pick us up. We're in the tire parking lot shop, whatever. And I'm walking with my eight-year-old son across the parking lot of the tire lot, tire, tire shop, whatever you say it. And as I'm walking across from my car to the inside of the tire shop, some dude was pissed because I wasn't walking fast enough. 
honk his horn, give me the double, I love you. And I turned and I looked at him like, bro, you don't even know what's about to happen right now. <laughs> Cursing me out because I'm walking too slow with my eight year old. Andre is right there in his car. Andre opens the door, stands up. That dude put his hands down, tucked his tail between his legs, and drove off so fast. And I was like, that is the one I'm talking about right there. See, when you have somebody that's bigger, stronger, more powerful than you are, it changes how you walk through life. I will fear no evil. Why? Because... because he is with me. He's with, I'm going through a divorce. It's okay. God's with you. He's going through it with you. It's not the best thing in the world. It's painful. It's ripping your, but let me tell you something. God is going with you. I'm going through this situation with my child. You're, our good God is with your child. Our good God is with your child. Our good God didn't leave your child. Our good God did not walk away from your child. I'm going through this health battle. God's going through it with you. God's going through it with you. He's going through it with you. He's going through, I'm going through depression. He's right there with you. He's right there with you. I will fear no evil. My God shall supply all my needs, all my needs, all my needs. He gives me all I need. We just sang a song called Yahweh and it's an impact church original and I, I just wanted to talk about it for a minute because it's my personal favorite of the album because of the history of the song so you might sing the song and it might mean a certain thing to you but but to me this song has deep deep, deep meaning. For me, this song is personal. The song Yahweh is personal. Clearly, you can tell by looking at my life that the word Yahweh has something, there's something going on with PT and this word Yahweh. Because I got a tattoo on my arm, Yahweh. I got a shirt, Yahweh. We got hats, Yahweh. I preach sermons, Yahweh. I sang songs and written songs, Yahweh. It's because it has deep meaning for me. Because when this song was written, it was written by my worship leaders and myself. And it was written from a deep desperation in need of God's peace, in need of God's presence, in need of God's power. It was written from the valley of the shadow of death. It wasn't written for those who might be in the valley. It was written from people who were in the valley. And verse one, and you heard it today, maybe it was for the first time, but my soul is shaking. My, my heart is aching. My mind, it's, it's breaking. I'm shaken to my core. Have you ever felt like that? But then we shifted to the pre-chorus because the pre-chorus is, but I, but I know it. I know it like I know it. I know it like I know it, that my miracle is complete. I know it like I know it. He gives me all I need. I know it. I can count on it. I'm, a, I'm putting my hope. He gives me all I need. I learned this last week that if you don't follow our YouTube channels, um, you should. It's a good moment to plug our YouTube. Our Impact Church YouTube channel has all our sermons. Um, our Impact Worship 
YouTube has all of our live recording worship songs. And I learned just the other day that that song Yahweh on YouTube has been viewed 70 something thousand times in five months. In five months. And I also learned that our entire Impact Worship album, the songs of all the songs have been streamed 925,000 times. So I encourage you to go subscribe to our YouTube channels. It's resources. Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Success isn't, oh, look how many times we were streamed or viewed. Success is, look how many people that song is making an impact on. Look how many people that's giving hope to. Look how many people that's filling people's soul. My, my, my prayer is that God, that God, you are our supplier. Number three is that God is my savior. Come on, somebody. God is my savior. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my supplier. The Lord is my savior. Psalm 23, 3 promises he restores my soul. Your soul needs restoration. Your soul's been through hell and back. Your soul has been broken and beaten and damaged. Your soul has been wounded. It has been betrayed. Your soul has broken the laws of God. You have sinned over and over and over again. Sin separates us from the love of God. except for the fact that we have a savior. Yep, yep. We have a savior. He restores my soul. He restores your soul. I resonate so much with the artwork of this shirt. We had our entire stage wear this shirt today. If there was ever a shirt that I said, that's me, that's me right there. It's this shirt. I resonate so deeply with the shirt because my life without Christ is just dry bones. It's dry bones. Without Christ, I've got nothing. Without Christ, my, my, my soul, it thirsts. It thirsts, my soul is starving. It's starving. Your soul, listen, your soul, it's starving. It's thirsting. The problem with most of us is we have a thirsty soul and we're trying to quench our thirsts with things that make us thirstier. Have you ever, have you ever been around somebody and they're like, man, I'm thirsty. And then they grab a Dr. Pepper. I'm not judging. And in my head, I'm like, you're going to be more thirsty after you drink that Dr. Pepper. And have you ever been to a pro sports game and you're so thirsty and you go to buy a bottle of water and they have $19 bottles of water, but it's Dasani, which is the devil's water. If you haven't figured this out yet, you'll drink one bottle of Dasani and you're going to drink 15 more because it's owned by Coca-Cola. 
So you better bet they got something in there that's going to keep you coming back for more. Them stadiums, they're not selling the high dollar water, the good stuff for you, the stuff that quenches your soul because they, 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 they want you coming back for more. Man, I have this, this thirst in my soul and, and I'm just reaching to satisfy. I just, I've got this thirst. And so, man if, I, man, if I just make more money, man, if I just get this job, if I just get this business, if I just get this relationship, if I just get this girl, if I just get this guy, if I just have a family. And, and here's what happens. And you guys all know this. You go get all this stuff. And you realize, dude, my soul is still really thirsty. In fact, it's more thirsty. Because I've been buying Dr. Peppers and shoving them into my soul. And it's made me more thirsty. Because you can have all the stuff of earth. But money can't buy what God can give. Money can't buy what God can give. He restores my soul. Psalms chapter 42 verse 1 says, As the deer pants for water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. Psalm 119.20 says, My soul is starved and hungry, ravenous, insatiable for your nourishing commands. My soul, it starves for a savior. And this is why I resonate so deeply with this shirt because God, I am thirsty. I am starving. I am dead without you. And there's this phrase in the song, but you give me all I need. You give me all I need. In the Old Testament, there's a prophet named Ezekiel. And God takes Ezekiel to a valley and in this valley it's full of dead dry bones those bones that were dead and dry represented Israel's spiritual condition they had become dead and dry and he says to Ezekiel Ezekiel can these bones can these bones live Ezekiel says, only you know, God, only you would know. And God says, prophesy to these bones and tell them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy means to speak the truth. The truth for your life is God's word. It's not what your mama said. It's not what your girlfriend said. It's not what CNN said. It's not what Fox News said. It ain't what Tucker Carlton said or whatever his name is. The truth is God's word. Whether your feelers like it or not. The truth is God's word. To prophesy means that I'm speaking the truth. I'm speaking God's word. To prophesy means that I open my mouth and I declare and proclaim until what I'm seeing looks like what I'm saying. Prophesy. Because Proverbs 18 verse 1 says, death and life are in the power of of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit prophesy Ezekiel prophesy so I prophesy oh I love this part as I was commanded and as I was prophesying there was a noise 
a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, and the tendons and the flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them, verse 9. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, son of man. Prophesy to the breath, son of man. Prophesy and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into the slam that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them and they came to life and they stood up on their feet, a vast army. I know a lot of you have no idea what I just read. But I thought I'd tell you. Because this is what God does. Is he brings dead things back to life. He brings dead things back to life. He brings dead relationships back to life. He brings dead dreams back to life. He brings the depression back to life. He brings the sick back to life. He restoreth my soul because the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my savior. Listen, woo. Hey, Chris, some people, some people, Hey, some of y'all are standing right smack in the middle of the valley right now and you're wondering why all these dead things are in your life. Maybe, just maybe, it's because you've been killing them with your words. That's a whole other sermon. I just want to say this. There's, there's two words. I just want to say this. Give me just a quiet, just for a sec. Just, just, come right back. Come just a sec. Okay, off. <laughs> look at somebody that you love right now. Go ahead, look at them. You're going to prophesy to them right now and tell them this. Look at them. Keep looking at them. Tell them, stop complaining. <laughs> Woo! That's what I'm talking about right now. Stop complaining. Stop complaining, Jaden. You know what I'm saying, Jay? Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Okay, 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 okay. Look at him again. And tell him because you complaining is draining. Am I preaching too long? I got seven, eight people walking out on me right now. That's okay. Got to get to the Cardinals game. They're going to lose. Uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Anyway. <laughs> you, you can't keep... <laughs> you can't keep crucifying things with your mouth and expect to see resurrections. Since y'all are leaving anyway, I'm going to close in prayer. <laughs> y'all staying around, you're just Jesus freaks. That's okay. Let me close this in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for your word. God, we thank you that it is, um, it is what gives life to our dead, dry bones. Your word your spirit the power of the Holy Spirit God would you just saturate our souls today God you 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 are everything we need everything God you are our shepherd the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd. You are my supplier. You supply, you supply with me. You are my source, God. And God, you're, you're my savior. 
God, we need a savior. If you're here today and maybe you've never prayed, maybe you've never prayed to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm so glad you're here today and I hope, I hope that you'll take this moment and acknowledge Jesus is your Savior. You're here and you say, you know what, man, you're making some sense to me. I, I've tried everything. My, my soul is thirsty. I've tried, I've tried all the things the world has to offer. My soul is still starving. It's still thirsting. Today, if that's you and you have never tried Jesus, you've never, you've never dedicated your life and said, Jesus, I'm in, I'm in. I acknowledge you as my Savior today. Listen, I want you to do that right now. And if that's you, I, I want to pray with you. Would you raise your hand? If that's you right now, raise your hand where you are. Today, I want to I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Acknowledge him as my Savior. There are hands up everywhere. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I want to acknowledge Jesus today. Jesus, I will acknowledge you as my Savior. God, today that you would forgive me of my sins. God, that you would forgive me. God, give me a new start. God, that I'm a new creation, as the Bible says in Christ Jesus. Anyone who comes to Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for paying the price for my sin. God, I pray for those in a valley today. If, you gotta, if you're in a valley today, lift your hand. You're in a valley today. I want to pray for you. Lift your hand. You're in a valley. God, you see every hand lifted. You see every hand lifted. They say, I'm in a valley today. God, we thank you that you are with us. God, I pray for your protection in this valley. I pray, God, that there is a testimony that we are going to give to the world when we come out on the other side of this valley. God, do the impossible today. Do the impossible. That's why we're here, God. Because you do what we cannot do.